It's the right time, and I'm Tracy Laird, and we're here with Hannah Beth Jackson. It's a pleasure to see you. I feel like I see you all the time, even though you haven't been our Assemblywoman since 2004. You've been very behind the scenes. Tell us what you've been up to, and I know the big news is you're running for State Senate. Right. Well, you know, leaving, leaving public office doesn't ser necessarily mean you stop serving the public, and it's been a passion of mine. I really enjoyed my uh, six years in the state legislature serving from... Uh, 1998 through 2004, I, I felt that I was able to help accomplish some really important things that needed to be done in energy and education and moving us towards a green economy. Before the recession? Before the recession. We started seeing a little bit of it, but you know, difficult times are, they're a challenge, but they're an opportunity. And so since 2004, I served as the first public policy maker in residence at UC Santa Barbara, where I taught classes that dealt with California politics and leadership leadership and what it takes to sort of get that next generation involved in the process. And then I also helped to found two nonprofit organizations which were designed to try to advance a more progressive discussion about values and things that are important to Tell our state. Tell what they are called. Well, they're uh, called the Institute, it was originally the Institute for the Renewal of the California Dream, but that was a little too long, <laughs> okay. and people uh, don't talk in those big, uh, big uh, It's hard to think of things. Things. That's true. So now we call it Renew California. So it's got a website and everything? It does, California. it does, okay. and we really talk about the values that I think that most Californians share, for investing in education and our infrastructure, making sure we get everybody working in a robust, green economic time, providing a safety net for people. And the other is, a, is actually a website. We started back in 2005 called uh, Speak Out California. And we have done voter guides and things. We were actually the first statewide voter guide mm -hmm. in the state to, start, to try to give people an idea, go on the web and see what progressives, groups like the environmental community, groups like California Now, groups that are uh, our labor uh, community where they are on various issues and when people are going out to vote trying to cut through all of the mishmash and all of the uh, you so know the talking so heads. You go online people. and see those those uh, I guess players that you might want to go vote for. Well different ballot measures if you remember Schwarzenegger when he got elected was, said you know we're going to change the world and he came up with some terrible ideas and we talked about them and presented them to the public just to provide information which is so important. Since you brought him up, what do you think of how we have never seen him lately? He's going to make another movie. What do you think of that whole mess? Well I think that you know when, when Schwarzenegger was elected he had a real opportunity. The public was excited about him and the promises of a different California and he really disappointed uh, and I think frankly he really wasn't equipped to do the job you know he came in as the Terminator uh, but that's those are lines that you read in a uh, script and I don't think he understood the people of California I don't think he understood this is a very complicated state he put something on the ballot though and now the current governor Brown is doing something very similar I mean they're both sort of saying you have to pass this or else and we're wondering you know if that tax initiative in November I don't have any tea leaves, but people are talking about it. Well, it really depends. Um, you know, right now California is uh, is just starting to feel its way out of what's been a very serious recession. We have a, still have a terrible percentage of people unemployed. We've got to get people back to work. So people are hurting financially. And Do you think unsure. they'll vote to increase the sales tax and a 1%? Well, that's a good question. Nobody really knows right now. I think that there have been a number of initiatives on the ballot, and I think the only way any of them will pass is if they're reduced down to one initiative that people can focus on. If you give people too much too to much think about, too right. much information, they're just going to vote no. Right. So uh, I think that's what the governor's working on now. And I think the, the case has to be better made that we need this money. People are concerned that there's all this fraud, waste, and abuse in the state. And there is some fraud, waste, and abuse. What people don't realize is that we've already a little bit. cut, we've already cut 15 to 20 billion dollars out of the state fund. And what, but, but what people have seen is that it's hurting education, it's hurting the safety net, it's threatening our public safety. So what people have to decide is where they want to spend what limited resources we have, while at the same time we have to continue finding that waste. And there's always a little waste. You've got to cut the waste, you've got to get people believing again in the state, and then if they do believe in the state, and they believe that the money's going to go to a good purpose, particularly to education, then they may vote for it. I remember um, you worked with Doss Williams, and he commented on 
you know, the proposition for putting uh, the initiative on the ballot, which would increase the sales tax half cent for five years and add like a 1% surcharge on people making over a quarter million dollars a year. And he said that, what, you know, that last year you mentioned that they cut what, 14 billion from the budget and he felt that everything that's put on the chopping block has to be vetted. And I thought, you know, how can it be vetted? I mean, what, what can the assembly do when the money's not there? Well, the, the, the assembly, the Senate, the, the governor, I mean, that, that's the, the choice that the people of California like have someone to Someone loses unless you do an across the board, and then is, are you more in favor of an across the board? Well, I, we've already done a lot of the done across the boards. I think we have to look at what is most efficient and what is most effective. For example, there are a lot of programs in California that if we put in a dollar, the federal government will match it with four dollars, ah. or the federal government will match it with six dollars, and we give a lot of tax money and to we the federal give, government, and we should be getting a lot of it back. And so, what you have to look at, I think, is if we if if you invest a dollar, if you give somebody a dollar and they give you back four, that's a pretty good deal. Can you name one of those areas? Well, one of the areas in particular that I'm particularly involved in is the whole issue of um, health care, reproductive health care. Okay. For every dollar that uh, we provide in family planning, we get something like five or six dollars back from, from uh, various other programs. Nice investment, a nice return on it's investment. It's a good return on investment, and those are the kinds of things that we need to consider as we move forward. We really need to decide where we can get the best bang for our buck. Right. But we also need, and I really believe this, and it's part of what I've been doing in terms of trying to educate the public, is when you get rid of all the sound bites and all the hysteria, people need to really know what the facts are, where their tax money is going, and have people prioritize where they want this money to That was when we used to say transparency a few years ago. And Absolutely. Out there. Let's go to talk redistricting because your district, as an assembly person, very much mirrors the new Senate district. And I find that fascinating. I was uh, doing a story on Congressman Gallagher, who decided not to get back in the race, and I realized that his district had changed numbers not just twice, three times. And, and so this is nothing new for people that are politicians, but for the voter, it's like, what number am I living in now? So That's tell true. me about your district. Well, you know, every 10 years we redistrict to try to reflect the population, because every district is supposed to be about the same population. Same population uh, as every like, other district. Oh, same number of people, same number of not people. the way, the kind of Oh, no, people. no, no. Okay. Those are called communities of interest. Got it. Okay. You know, what's important to the people in the Central Valley is different to the, the people, people here. Okay. Exactly. So it's the same number. Every Senate district now, which is about twice the size, is actually twice the size of an Assembly district, is about 960,000 people. Wow, so you're, you're looking for a million people. Public said, look, we don't want politicians gerrymandering, cutting up these districts as they had done in the, in the last census and in the last redistricting. So there was an independent, uh, publicly um, organized redistricting commission that the people- they had a, they had a different part, nonpartisan and exactly, Republicans and Exactly, okay. it was decided by the people in an initiative and they actually did the redistricting. So the 19th Senate District, which is where we are sitting now in the district that I am running for, is a district that now is very different than when it had been gerrymandered. And now the district is all of Santa Barbara County. Nobody carved out, nobody added to. And all of Ventura County, West Ventura County, up to the Conejo grade. So in Ventura County, you have Port Wainimi, Oxnard, Ventura, Camarillo, Camarillo um, you have El Rio, Santa you have Paula, Pir Santa Paula, Pirou, Fillmore, Fillmore, Santa Paula, okay. and Machita, all that. Ojai, the whole area, nothing carved out. The last time they, they took out Oxnard, they put in Simi Valley, and they put in Santa Clarita which is well, LA. And Oxnard was sort of part of Santa Monica, and that was That's an unusual right. so thing. So what they've done is the district now makes sense geographically and in terms of what the basic interests are, the community. So it's a much, much more realistic and honest district. And I'm very excited about, I represented so many of these people uh, when I was in the assembly, and I've worked with all the people of these various communities since then and during them, which is why I have so much support to, from elected officials and from the community activists and from just the community in general, teachers well, and so on. I want to ask you about what the issues you think will bring the voters to the polls for the Senate seat, the Senate vote, and we'll do that right after this.
We're back with The Right Time. I'm Tracy Lair, and I'm here with Annabeth Jackson. We were just talking about the new Senate district she is running for. It'd be a new place for you from the Assembly to the Senate. Does the Senate seem like something where you can get more done? Well, there are fewer members of the Senate. It's kind of like the, the same way you look at the House of Representatives in Congress, and then you look at the Senate in Congress. The House is 435 people. The Senate is 100. So uh, there is uh, more collegiality. It's theoretically supposed to be a place where people who've had some experience and success in their work uh, are, are elected to the Senate, uh, having uh, hopefully done a good job uh, working with, with their colleagues in the Assembly. So there, it's a, a place where there are people who really understand public policy, at least theoretically. Right. Um, and it's a place where I, I really am excited about the, the prospects of uh, getting to work and trying to accomplish things on behalf of the community that I represent. If you were going to pick three bullet points on the issues you really want to tackle, what would you say they were? Well, clearly the first issue is jobs and the economy. Uh, while the numbers seem to be getting a little bit better, it's hard to tell that to people who've lost their homes and who are out of work or whose kids have come home to live with their parents. You know, I've got an adult daughter who I'm so happy is on her own and able, to, and able to take care of herself. But there's so many young people who, for whom there are no jobs, right. and they're trying hard, but the economy is a mess. We've got to get one of the back things, though. Work. That your daughter got quite an education, that's uh, true. and I, I'm thinking that that's really what a lot of people that are thinking. Okay, I might not get my dreams on my generation, but my kids could if I could give them a good start. Is that something on your agenda? Well, the first is jobs and the economy. The second is education yes. because. Education is the key to economic opportunity. There's no question about it. Edu an educated populace is going to provide the workforce, the expertise that's going to bring businesses to the state. You know, there's all this talk about, oh, how uh, there's so much regulation in California chases companies out. And actually, the fact is that it is not true. What brings companies to California and to other states where arguably they see you know, t taxes and regulation higher, what brings companies to California is an educated workforce and infrastructure. So those are the things we have to do. We have to fix our infrastructure, roads and, and our communities, because people want to sell their goods here. They need to transport their goods. They need to be able to sell them here. And so we need to have those two qualities, a well-educated workforce. So like a high-tech education. Oh, absolutely. I want to see California the home of the high-tech and green economy. We're already doing that. We've always taken the lead in environmental issues. And in fact, uh, we've just seen uh, the implementation of a regulation that's going to reduce energy use, it's going to conserve energy, and it's going to allow us to be more efficient with our energy. It's going to create uh, the opportunity to develop... Is that the light bulb? What is that? That is the, um, these chargers, oh, the, the charger. uh, okay. electronic chargers, the, um, uh, the um, portable, I think they're called portable uh, electronic chargers, uh, that we well, uh, or to, to create ones that are more energy okay. efficient. What happens is while they're sitting in the well, they're still sucking up energy, even if they're not uh, right. providing that uh, battery charger that you need for your very, you know, various it's just, tools. It's just learning how to use them. Well, speaking on that education note, is throwing money at education make education better, or is there a better way? Well, I don't think I don't think it's a question of throwing money. It's using money wisely. Okay. It's making sure that we have teachers who have training, teachers who are uh, inspired, teachers who are rewarded and appreciated for their work, and giving them the opportunity in the classroom so that they actually have the time to teach. There's a real question uh, about these, uh, all the tests, tests that taking. are being taken. You know, you, you, do you teach to a bubble or do you teach to a, an ability to give young people uh, the opportunity to learn a trade or to learn a concept or to learn how to think critically? You know, in democracy, we let it, it is the people's responsibility to decide how they want to be governed. And the way you do that is by educating young people so that they, when they hear all this nonsense going on, all this hype, the 30-second ads and all, they can cut through it and know exactly what they're hearing and know, know exactly what they want and how to get there. That's a critical component to one civic's responsibilities. And I think what's happened is if we, tr if we dumb down and teach just to a test, now tests are important to kind of judge people's levels, but let's bring the teachers in. They're the experts. Let's have them more involved. 
When they're more involved and they have more buy-in, they're more engaged. When you say to teachers, this is what you're going to do, when we come in, we're top heavy, this is how you're going to do it, uh, it doesn't get done. So I'd like to see more, more bringing things back to the local community. That's why I have the support of the, so many members of the school board, our superintendents here in Ventura County. If you want to give tax incentives, give them incentives for to creating stay. jobs oh, in okay. California, Instead not just, for sending them out. Check. Absolutely. Okay. So there are things we can do to, 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 to uh, have that occur. I think one of the ways to, to get businesses to work in California is to create the home of the green economy. Let's develop the ideas here. Let's de manufacture the products here. Let's implement them here. Let California be While the example. While you're saying that, though, in Camarillo, there is a solar company that's not doing as well as it was you know, a few years ago, and China is already making them cheaper. So it's a, that's a really, it's a, a, t, a seesaw really. Right, well let's give incentives for those, for, you know, they're making them cheaper, we can make it cost effective by giving tax incentives to that company here in Camarillo. But now there's this big national scare of that because what happened during President Obama's uh, uh, well, uh, giving money to maybe something they didn't look into. As well, well, you know, there's always going to be, uh, oh, we're always going to make company. some boo-boos. There's okay. no question about it. Uh, we've given money to oil companies to drill for oil much over that, the right. amount of money right. that have come up totally dry. You know, you hate to see that. I mean, that's a, uh, I mean, so, just... So you foresee a time when, when everyone might have a little bit of solar on their roof and well, it might I'd make like a big to, impact. I'd like to encourage that. And there are ways that we can do that. Do, do you know in this district, uh, many of the elementary schools have the biggest solar panels around and they're actually getting paid kickback yeah. money, not kickback is the wrong word, but they're getting incentives reimbursed. reimbursed right. It's a beautiful power. thing. And it looks and pretty on the playground, amazing. And you know what, those are the kinds of things we can be doing is giving incentives to, to individuals, to, to businesses and so all. It's like a public-private partnership almost. Well, what it is is it says, look, we're going to make it financially worth your while to do the right thing. Okay. And and there are schools and there are businesses that are ready to jump on it. But you have to you have to make it financially worthwhile. You know, businesses run on the basis of can they make money. Mm -hmm. And so you have to give them incentives to do these things. And there are a lot of companies out there that want to do that. So we have to make it worth their while. And as you say, at the end of the day, there are different things that we can do like paying people to have reverse metering, they call it, which means that you, have a, you can produce enough energy so that you don't need it all. You sell it back to the company, you sell it back, they call right. it to the grid. Right. Wow, what a that great opportunity. Thing. So we don't have to build more power plants so that we can soften our footprint by using green technologies. We have 300 days of sunshine a year here in California. We should be using and some that. Wind. <laughs> and a little wind. We have a lot of wind yeah. in the Oxnard Plain. We should be harnessing that so we don't have to use the fossil fuels that are creating havoc with our What do you uh, say to companies like in, in your district, if you became the state senator, uh, Decker Outdoors is building headquarters in Goleta. I mean, what do you, that company, is it doing it just because it's doing the right thing or does it see it as a, good for the bottom line? Well, you know, I'd like to think that, that businesses will operate just because it's the right thing to do, but they're businesses. They need to have, they need to have they a have bottom a line. Course, I sure, they, they need to have a bottom line, a bottom line basis for doing it. So mm -hmm. it's great. There are companies like Decker, Patagonia, one of That's the great right. green companies. They've been green for 30 years, right in Ventura, you know, as a model for what is the right thing to do. But it's also good business decisions. It, it helps to make money. I think we need to provide, to sit down with different businesses. It's one of the things I've really enjoyed. I've been talking with a number of our local businesses. What did you need to make, uh, to make your business work that's also going to be good for the community and good for the planet? When you hear small businesses or someone who wants to be a startup, it just seems like they feel like they're surrounded by red tape and they don't know how to It's time for the banks to get to it and start taking care of the communities. And, and uh, frankly, a lot of us are very disappointed and probably angry. That sounds like uh, Ben Bernanke talking to us. Well, oh, and, and Ben I, Bernanke is in a position to make it to happen. To make that happen. Right. Well, I, I suppose, but he was saying that, you know, even though people blame Wall Street, what happens on Wall Street does affect Main Street, and if Wall Street is going under, like he was talking well, about Well, there are things now. that Wall Street can't, you know, right. Wall Street's back to making billions of dollars But again. you don't want it's to fire in the house next door is, I think, the way he put it. Well, I think that what you do is you say to Wall Street, if you really want to make any money, you're going to have to do these things, and you do it by creating incentives, you create it, you know, you, there's a carrot and a stick approach. You're going to, for example, we have corporations that are sitting on a, a trillion and a half to two trillion dollars in cash 
that they're not spending. There are a lot of people out there that really want to work and need jobs. They're just sitting on that cash. You say to them, okay, you want to sit on that cash, but you sit on it too long, we're going to tax that cash. Ah, ah suddenly you're going to see jobs being created. I want to see these companies sit down with them and say, what do you need to create these jobs? You know, there is regulation. Is there over-regulation? Well, maybe so, uh, but what we really need to do is to provide a good economy. Because when you talk to mom and pops and you say to them, what do you need to make your business work? You know what they tell you? I need customers. I need people walking in the door who have a dollar to spend. We need to put money back in the pockets of the middle class so they can go out and, and spend that consumer. money for goods and services. Um, before we wrap up, where are you going to be that people can, I, I guess, see you speaking because it sounds like even your I would love to sit into your class at UCSB because it'd be like a civics lesson. Well, actually, now I'm teaching a class out at Antioch. Oh. Uh, Antioch at Santa Barbara. Um, I did a radio show, actually, for a year and a half called Speak Out with Hannah Beth. No, they took and that station out. Right? Well, they did. They did. That's another topic okay, for yeah, another day. We need more stations. Okay. Uh, we do. We need to have more open discussion. We need to have discussions where people can talk without shouting at each other and we can exchange ideas in a respectful manner and find those areas where we agree and those areas where we disagree and try to work together. That's something that was so important to me when I was in the assembly and I want to get back and work together on issues so that we can move the public forward, we can get the economy going, improve education, Are you protect the environment. Are you thinking you'll be up for some debates? I know the time is going to, before you well, know it's going to be a There was a, um, we had a little town hall um, in Oxnard uh, the other night. Uh, I'm sure there will be more, but I invite people to come to my website, which okay. is www hannabeth2012.com. Uh, we'll be having more content. People can see the list of endorsements. I'm very proud of the endorsements that I've got okay. so far from the local community. And uh, hopefully we'll do some chatting back and forth. I love social media. I, I'm getting better at it every day. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to having that exchange with people and, and uh, reaching out and having conversations and getting back to Sacramento and, and fighting for the people, fighting against those special interests and doing the people's work and helping move our economy and our communities forward. Well, we look forward to having you back on the right time anytime. So Thank you. thanks for being here. That's it for today. Have a great one.